Traders often look at the bond market for clues on how the U.S. economy will perform, specifically the yield curve. Given the yield curve inversion. We inverted back in March. Yes, we now have an inversion. Even if the yield curve inversion happens again and happens persistently. The president tweeting out crazy inverted yield curve. So what is the yield curve all about and why is everybody talking about it? The yield curve is just a graph showing the relationship between short-term and long-term interest rates of U.S. Treasury notes. Usually, the short-term rate is lower than the long-term one. But if you are lending money to the federal government, which is essentially what happens when you buy a Treasury note, you are taking a bigger risk by letting the government have your money for a longer period of time. So you're going to want a higher interest rate to compensate you for taking on that risk. But sometimes, this relationship changes. If the two rates start getting closer together, that's called a flattening yield curve. If the long-term rate dips below the short-term rate, that's what we call an inverted yield curve. And the market is concerned about it. Investors waking up this morning to a recession warning from the bond markets. The Dow plunging more than 800 points, sparked by a key economic indicator faltering. A brutal day on Wall Street stocks plunging as a yield curve inverted, sparking fears that a recession could be on its way. The yield curve's predictive power has made it a crucial metric for investors and policymakers alike. The reason why we watch the yield curve so closely is that it has been an incredibly accurate predictor of recessions. Every time that that yield curve has inverted, the economy eventually has gone into a recession. You can see that predictive power on this chart. It shows the difference between the long-term 10-year and short-term 3-month Treasury rates. When that line goes below zero, it represents an inversion. And those inversions have preceded every single U.S. recession going back 50 years. But it wasn't until the 1980s when policymakers started to catch on. Back in the late 80s, the yield curve was being referred to as a possible leading indicator of the economy. And I was asked by my bosses whether there was anything to this, whether uh, you could prove statistically that there was a relationship. Arturo Estrella is one of the economists who helped discover the predictive power of the yield curve while working with a colleague at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. By early 1989, we were not only seeing the predictive power in general using historical data, but we actually saw an inversion. So at that point, it seemed to be indicating that there would be a recession about a year later and our presentations were met with a lot of skepticism. But the recession started in 1990, so it was almost a perfect prediction. Many still doubted the yield curve's predictive power, but Estrella's model then successfully predicted the recession in 2001 before the dot-com bubble burst. The worst day ever on Wall Street. All the major indices are now down for the year. And perhaps most notably, after a 2006 yield curve inversion, his model accurately predicted the 2007 downturn that became the Great Recession. Lehman here is going bankrupt. Some of the biggest names in American business are tonight gone, along with a lot of money and a lot of jobs. Estrella's work focused on the difference between the three-month and 10-year interest rates. But many in the finance world also watched the difference between the two-year and 10-year rates closely. The New York Fed research focused on the three-month tenure. They feel that that has the most predictive power. I think a lot of the Wall Street guys that you talk to will tell you that they don't start to get excited about it until the two-year and the ten-year inverts. The broad principles are pretty similar between both metrics. But to get a clearer idea of how they work, we can imagine traffic on an interstate. Think of two- and ten-year bonds like car and truck lanes on a highway. Normally, when the two-year rate is lower than the 10-year, traffic is moving along smoothly. Cars in the two-year lane are moving faster than trucks in the 10-year. But the Fed raises its benchmark rate if they think things are going too fast in the left lane. Imagine the Fed, like the sheriff, enforcing the speed limit. Raising rates puts a damper on the economy, slowing down those in the fast lane. The short-term interest rate is more closely tied to the Federal Reserve Funds rate. And it's more connected to how the economy is expected to perform in the short run the long-term interest rate is usually higher. Investors are usually paid more to lend for a longer period of time. As the economy grows, you need the money you lend out to be worth more when you get it back. But the long-term outlook for the economy may not be changing much. Those trucks chugging along may even speed up a little. Well, you know what happens when the trucks in the right lane are going faster than the cars in the left lane. That's the inversion we talked about earlier. And there's a good chance there's traffic ahead.
it becomes more expensive to borrow for the short run than in the long run. All of this affects how people lend and the risks they're willing to take. That can help drive a recession. The unconventional traffic pattern may get people to start changing lanes, adding to the complexity and eventual traffic. It's important to note that the recessions don't happen immediately after the inversion, but it does mean the clock is ticking, especially when it comes to the three-month ten-year curves that Estrella has done so much work on. The peak predictive power is for about a year ahead, you know, maybe a year to a year and a half. Another caveat is that quick, little inversions in the yield curve lasting for a day, a week, or even up to a month are considered exceptions to the rule. Instead, it's prolonged month-to-month -month inversions that suggest a recession is actually coming. It's also important to keep in mind that even a brief yield curve inversion can spook the markets. The fact of the matter is that we don't have the kind of markets that we used to have. We don't have markets where it's a personal touch to it that, that we have individual investors out there doing things. Sometimes it's just yield curve inversion can get fed into the electronic trading systems and it can just trigger really fast knee-jerk reactions. A lot of this is program trading, just computerized trading, especially when you have markets that trade on thin volume. It doesn't take a whole lot to move them. And when something that has the predictive power of an inverted yield curve comes along, it can be very influential in a highly sensitive market. So let's say the yield curve has actually inverted. What happens between that moment and the theoretical recession that the inversion is predicting? Well, a back and forth tends to emerge from market watchers, and the inversion in 2019 offered a good example, with one camp essentially saying, this time it's different. It's always uh, kind of a scary thing to say this time is different, but I'm, I'm gonna say it too. The yield curve inversion I would not read too much into. There's no likelihood that the inversion of the yield curve that's occurring in this period, A, is similar to the ones that occurred in the prior period, or B, that it will lead to a recession. And another camp heeding the curve's warnings. I've been getting this pushback that essentially the yield curve is inverted because global yields are low. So, you know, it's, it's not that good an indicator. I would actually argue it is a very good indicator because we just find it very hard to see how global growth can be this weak and the U.S. can be this one island of, of essentially prosperity. I think we're up toward 40 percent of recession risk within the next 12 months. And that's a large part uh, in reflecting what the yield curve is telling us. Amongst the curve's detractors, some wondered if the very act of watching the curve so closely had undermined its worth as an economic indicator. Historically, we had not been following the yield curve as closely as we follow it now. There's something called the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Something that's being observed is going to act differently than when it's not being observed. Others pointed to negative sovereign interest rates abroad. You have 20 percent more sovereigns yielding negatively than you had just a few months ago. So there's this drive for yield. Attributing the inversion to a spike in demand for long-term U.S. Treasuries as money fled those negative rates in other countries. Trade advisor Peter Navarro comes out, Guy, and says, it's just, it's just a reflection of the fact that everybody wants our debt. Questions also emerged over whether Federal Reserve policy since 2008 played a role. I think the Fed still has a large balance sheet, and that could be putting some downward pressure on those longer-term rates. So I'll keep watching that carefully for sure, but I don't yet see the signal uh, that suggests it's time to get worried about a downturn. Or whether the trade war had contributed. I think what's happening is the trade tensions are catching up with the market. Uh, and I think people realize it's slowing global growth and this uncertainty does raise the risk of recession to its highest level uh, since the 2008 debacle. And I think that's really what's going on here. Amidst this back and forth, something interesting happened. The yield curve suddenly uninverted. Does that mean the recession fears were overblown and the naysayers were right? Not necessarily. Whenever the yield curve uninverts or re-steepens, people tend to be happier, more optimistic. If an inversion is a negative sign, then necessarily an uninversion would be a positive sign. And that may make intuitive sense, but what you'll see is if you look at a graph of inversions and recessions lagging thereafter, the yield curve typically uninverts even before a recession begins. You'll have this inversion um, with uh, short-term rates exceeding long-term rates, and then it's not uncommon to see um, that correct itself even in the span between the initial inversion and the recession. In other words, this re-steepening has proven part of the yield curve's normal predictive behavior. So the inversion is really just the beginning of the recession warning. But the curve can do all sorts of things as the recession it predicts comes about, at least historically.
but looking ahead, the economy's immense complexity could easily surprise experts with deviations from this pattern. It is one indicator. It has been a very good indicator. Is it going to be a foolproof indicator? Only time's going to be able to tell that.